Welcome to LUTV News In Focus, where we feature interesting topics on campus, in the community, and in the world of culture. I am Arthur Horman. In Texas, we are familiar with the phrase Friday Night Lights. When it comes to high school football, what many may not know is that before integration in the Lone Star State, black high schools would meet on the gridiron on Thursdays. Michael Hurd, author of the book Thursday Night Lights, is here to talk about the story of high school football in Texas and tell us about the influence of players and schools from the Garner Triangle. How are you doing today, Mr. Michael? I'm doing great, Arthur. How are you? I'm doing all right Wonderful. today. Um, what brings you here to Lamar University? I will be appearing uh, with a good friend of mine, Robert Jacobus, uh, this evening at the Gray Library uh, for a program called uh, Thurs From Thursday Night Lights to Black Man in the Huddle. And uh, the Thursday Night Lights aspect is me talking about my book, Thursday Night Lights, the history of uh, football at African American high schools in Texas. And Robert just wrote a wonderful book uh, called Black Man in the Huddle, which talks about uh, black players who integrated uh, some of the collegiate programs in Texas, uh, of course, back, back in the day. So it's kind of a continuation of my mm -hmm. subject. So mm -hmm. we'll go from high school to college and talk about uh, the incredible players from, from those eras. Okay, so um, was this, pl this plan between you guys or just like when you wrote your book, it happened and then he ended up writing another book? Uh, yeah, pretty much. That's the way it came down. Uh, my book, Thursday Night Lights, came out in uh, 2017 in October, and his book, uh, Black Man in the Huddle, just came out uh, a couple of months ago. Oh, okay, okay. Um, and you're from the Houston area, correct? I am from the Houston area, from, from Sunnyside, uh, Worthing High School, uh, graduate, graduate in 1967. So, the uh, era w for the PVIL for me, uh, I, I was closely involved in that era because those were the games that I knew and yes, the sir. teams that I knew. And what I knew about high school football back then was all about the PVIL, the Prairie View Interscholastic League. So you always was pretty much had a, a knowledge of the, the people that came out of the Golden Triangle, the high school fo football players, correct? Yes, I did, uh, because again, those are the players that I knew, and of course, uh, some of the players that I went to school with at Worthing, uh, Clifford Branch, uh, who played with the Raiders, um, three Super Bowl winning teams, was a classmate of mine, a uh, quarterback named Carl Douglas, who won uh, national championships uh, uh, at, uh, at uh, Texas, well, it's Texas and I, Kingsville mm -hmm. uh, now. So, uh, yeah, I knew I do a lot of those players and coaches and programs. So when I started my career as a sports writer, uh, you know, I would go and cover ball games, but I would always look at the rosters and see who were the players from the from the uh, high schools that I knew about. You know, including you know Hebert and uh, and uh, Charlton Pollard and, and all the other black schools. And and I just as as my career went, you know, I just started to learn more and more about some of these players. So, you know, I knew the PVIL had some great yes, players sir. coming out of there, uh -huh. but man, the more I read and the, the more I covered people, uh, the more I learned about just this wealth of talent uh, from the Golden Triangle. So, you, you learning these people mm -hmm. and learning about them, mm -hmm. who would you say was the most interesting yeah. to <laughs> all, all of them. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, you know, I, I look back at, at you know, I guess it's kind of inescapable, you know, the, the Soul Bowl and the guys who came out of that. And I think one of my f one of my favorite characters was uh, Coach Willie Ray Smith Sr., <laughs> you know, who coached at Charlton Pollard and was really colorful. Uh, in fact, uh, before Charlton Pollard, he coached at uh, Orange High School, uh, Wallace High School in Orange. And the last they saw of Coach uh, Smith yeah. <laughs> at Wallace, Ernie Ladd yeah, <laughs> was carrying, carrying him off, off, the, <laughs> off campus because uh, the coach was about to throw down with the principal. Definitely, it, it's, in your book, it was interesting, definitely. I, mm -hmm. I've known about really Ray Smith, mm -hmm. but like you're saying, like he was a character pretty much and had a, a different kind of swag, I guess you could say, so to speak. He said like, in the book, it's pretty much like a ladies' man <laughs> and all of that stuff. And like I never even knew that they said he was there when the body and Clyde situation. Uh, yeah, happened. apparently. Uh, well, he grew up in Denton, uh, Denton, Texas, uh, up north of Dallas. 
And uh, it just so happens that one day uh, he's a kid and he's downtown in Denton and Bonnie and Clyde had just robbed a bank and were having a shootout with the cops and a stray bullet, you know, caught him caught in the leg. And, it, uh, and so he uh, walked with a limp for the rest of his life and, and, uh, and apparently that's a true story. Yeah, and then saying that he pretty much started the uh, strap system. So to speak. The, the strap system, as it was called, which was basically, you know, black coaches back in the day didn't hesitate uh, to punish their players yeah, using the paddle or using a strap, you know, for them to, to get them in line to uh, properly motivate them. And uh, Coach Smith was one, one of the coaches who was a, a strong believer in the strap system and applying it to his players' backside. Yeah, see, I, I read a funny quote that's uh, – NFL legend head coach Bum Phillips mm -hmm. played in one game and they were down at halftime. Mm -hmm. And uh, you said that Bum Phillips said instead of taking them in, that he, he, he we, I guess, put something yeah. on that backside. <laughs> and you know, said Bum Phillips said that business picked up in that second half. Exactly, exactly. And, you know, I, I, I've had players like Jerry Levias, the, the great Hebrew player, who has said to me once, like a lot of the things that the coaches did back in the day now would be considered uh, child abuse. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> see, you know, they couldn't get away with that uh, nowadays. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking, uh, I guess that's why players were probably so great back then, and maybe they should probably do it now. I know everything is so sensitive, pretty much these days, but yeah. Yeah, well, it was back then. It was it was considered, I guess, a rite of passage but also a way to uh, bring, a, bring a kid into manhood, you know, mm -hmm. and, and to see how, see how tough you were. And uh, like I said, you know, you, you, you wouldn't be able to do some of those tactics now as a coach. You know, you can't really lay your hands on a player anymore. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. thank, thank you for coming and being on the show today. It was nice meeting you. Oh, it was my pleasure. His book, Thursday Night Lights, is available on Amazon.com. Thank you for watching LUTV News in Focus. To see more content from LUTV News, follow us on Twitter and like us on Facebook.